This rapid manner tutorial introduces the concept of term frequency inverse document frequency or TFIDF score for words and we'll look at document similarity and document clustering. We need to use operators from the text processing and web mining extensions to build this tutorial process. If you don't have these extensions installed, go to the marketplace in the extensions menu and install from there. If you're missing any specific parameters or want to apply some expert settings, check you have Show Advanced Parameters selected. I have a collection of job postings from a popular job board which I've dumped into an Excel spreadsheet. There's about 500 of them. I'm using the Read Excel operator to import the data from our spreadsheet and the Nominal to Text operator to convert the job posting information to text. I'm applying it to a single attribute which is the job description text, so job text. This is an important step. We want to use the process documents from data operator for our pre-processing and it will ignore any attributes that are not text. Let's double click the process documents from data to go inside. Inside, we begin with the extract content operator, which is from the web mining extension. It strips out all HTML code and tags. Then we tokenize to split the document into unique tokens, words in this example. Transform Cases converts all the text to lowercase so we can ignore capitalization. And Filter Stop Words filters out simple English words such as as, or, and and. And filter out single letter words. We'll set the process documents from Data Operator to output the TFIDF score and keep text. TFIDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency and it's an often referred to measure. So let's look at the way TFIDF works. Here's an Excel spreadsheet. The term frequency for a given term is the word count of a word in a document relative to the count of other words. In this example, I'll use 0.5, which would be a term frequency for a rather often occurring word in a given document. To get a feel for these different metrics, you could select to create term frequency vectors instead. Then document count is the number of documents. For count of documents containing the term, I'm assuming 10 documents contain the term we are looking at. Then one is added to that in case that number is zero, as you don't want to divide by zero. Then you calculate the ratio. So that one over that one, and you take the log of that. And then you multiply this one times that one. That gives you the TFIDF score. That's useful because it gives you the relative importance of a word to a given document compared to the importance of the word to all the documents in your corpus. So for example, if the word appears quite frequently in your document, then your TFIDF score is going to go up. But if a lot of documents contain that word, let's say 400 of them, then your TFIDF score is going to drop quite a bit. So if the word boat appears in your document lots of times, but not in other documents very often, then it'll have a high TFIDF score. And if it appears just a few times in your document and appears in quite a few documents elsewhere, it's not going to be very important, so it'll have a lower TFIDF score. That's the concept of TFIDF for a term in a document, which is good because we're going to use the vectors of all TFIDF scores for each of the documents to find out how similar they are. An easy way to look at document similarity is to use the similarity operator, data to similarity. You want to use the numerical measure cosine similarity. I'll show you why. This is a very simple example, just in two dimensions. Say your document has a couple of words, one is banana, it's got a score between 0 and 1, although TFIDF can go higher, and the word fish between 0 and 1. So say it's got a high fish score, but a low banana score. That's your first document there. And another document, say it has a high banana score and a medium fish score. So that's a second document there.
Now you've got a third document and you want to figure out which one it's most similar to. I say it's got a medium banana school and a medium fish school. It's basically just the distance, whichever one's closer is going to be the more similar document. So this one's slightly closer to that one. Now, because TFIDF scores are always positive, then what it actually does, it looks at the angle between the documents. So this angle is smaller than that angle. So it's going to say that these documents are more similar. It doesn't just use two words, it uses hundreds of words at a time, but it's basically what it does. Now this operator is not particularly fast because it has to make a huge matrix. So I would not recommend doing that with 500 documents. So I'm just going to grab 50 of the documents. And now going to run that. That took just a few seconds. Here's the results for you. So selecting your similarity measure object and then sort it by similarity. 36 and 38 are the most similar documents. So that document is 99% similar to the other one. So we'll go back to our example set. 36 and 38 are quite similar but not identical. I'm just going to copy 36 and 38 and paste into Notepad. This is the part-time sales associate. It's got quite a few overlapping words. It looks like it's the address that's different. Then way at the bottom, you're going to have documents that have no overlapping words at all. So that's document similarity. Now let's look at clustering. Clustering can be pretty quick, especially the k-means clustering algorithm. I'm going to go back to include all of the documents here. So I'll delete the sample operator. Clustering groups examples together, which are similar to each other you'll find the most similar documents and group them into a set number of groups which you need to choose yourself. I'd like clusters which are not too big, maybe on average 10 or a few more postings per cluster. This way, the postings in each cluster are more similar to each other than for bigger clusters which would then need to cover more heterogeneous topics. Since I have about 500 job postings in total, I'll try to create 40 clusters. This should on average create a cluster size of a few more than 10. Clustering results are not that easy to visualise, so there are several ways you can look at it. I'll look briefly at the output shortly, but I recommend you also use the Cluster Model Visualizer if you do it. To set that up, you'll need to duplicate the output, as I'm showing you here with a multiply operator, and then you add in the Cluster Model Visualizer. This operator is also the one used by Automodel when you do any unsupervised learning. Just leave that as is, TFIDF, and run that. It should take about a minute or so. In the example set, look at your data view and it's added a cluster column here. You can sort by that field to get your clusters all together. Here's cluster zero, for example, and you can see nanny, caregiver, school assistant, preschool teacher. So it's clustered all together jobs about children and carers. It'll have some similar clustered as well. You can see the number of items per each cluster. Some are pretty big, 31 versus four. If we look at the heat map visualization of the cluster model visualizer, you can see the main topics of each cluster easily. For example, cluster zero, two of the three main topics are caregiver and parents. So that's how clustering works. This concludes this tutorial on TFIDF score, similarity and clustering of documents.